Hello everyone, KV here, and welcome back to Let's Play Tales of Berseria Blind. On the last episode, we made it through the Manan Reef, or the Manan Reef, one of the two. We, uh, saw some things, uh, I don't really want to see again. And we finally made it to here, Palamedes Temple. Uh, we're here to basically tell the Abbey they're being a bunch of butts. And Eleanor wants to find out why they're being butts. Or if they are being butts, for that matter. I think they're probably being butts. Quitting is the same as defeat. Woohoo! Nice. There's no better victory than a safe return. Thanks, Eleanor. That gave us like crap for experience, though. I knew this would be. Ooh! Oh my golly! <laughs> D D L Mel, I get. <laughs> So, this is probably going to be something that's going to go over people's heads if you've only played the Western games uh, that were released in the U.S. These would be Mel and Dio's clothes from Tales of Phantasia and Narikiri Dungeon, the very first Narikiri Dungeon. Uh, some say they were once worn by two twins whose mastery of mimicry... See, mm -mm, but if they're here, that implies that this is indeed connected to Fantasia, because Narakiri Dungeon is technically speaking a direct sequel to Fantasia, but technically not considered a main series title, so maybe I am thinking about this too much, but uh, we learned a new skill. That's neat. That's neat. So I, once again, slur my words, uh, combining neat and nice to say that's nice. Um... Let's just see, we got that. Um, do you have we don't have anything here yet, so let's do that. Scout ship setting sail. Alright, so then let's go to our treasures list and get look at our new treasures. Cause yeah, we have Martel, we have that thing. Got that painting, remember that painting? And we have that amulet. I forget what that was. What was it called? What was this? A pendant. Nothing of any worth to me. Alright, anyways. Children's clothes. More odd junk, huh? Cool. We found the chest of drawers and, the D and see they're called DL Mel because the children's name it was like Dio and Mel were their nicknames. They had a full names because, technically speaking, not a Kitty Dungeons plot is a little bizarre in how it is executed, but it makes sense given the ability that their people had. Uh, so let's just go and look at these then. A master mimics. So that's playing into the fact that in Nautikiri Dungeon, you could become any type of like class. You know, like it, the other Nautikiri Dungeons. Uh, I, I wish, I wish more of those came out to the West. Though those are pretty fun. They're nice, cool crossover games. Anywho's, these clothes seem to have once belonged to the master mimics. What is a mimic anyway? A mimic can copy the abilities of a profession simply by wearing clothing used by that profession. Wow, that's quite remarkable. All right, Luffy set. Try them on, see what happens. If they're mimic clothes, then they might turn you into a mimic, right? I can try, but even if wearing these gives me the powers of a mimic, I'd have to put on a different set of clothes to use those powers. And once I take off the mimic clothes, I'll lose those abilities, so... We have no way to prove whether or not they have any powers. Uh, I... I see what you're saying. It's a nasty pair of dogs, isn't it? Paradox. It's a paradox. All right. Well, we're filling up our treasures. All right. I'm just gonna. That's always fun. Alrighty then. So moving on. Hey, buds. Someone knocked you out already. It looks like. What's this? Was it the priestess we came here to get, or something else? demon we heard about? Sounds like it's having fun. Then we'll use this distraction. Alright. Wow, look out. Oh, the temple goes under the sea. Oh, that makes sense, because the temple to the water, uh... Yeah, Empyrean. The ancients built this sanctuary underwater for the same reason that Eumacia's temples were built underground. But building this underwater couldn't have been easy. Aye. With the Earth Temples, all they had to do was keep digging. Here, they had water to contend with. So technically very been to one of the temples, I guess. The sea like you can a log. They started by stacking giant stone blocks in the shallows, creating an enclosed space. Then they drained the water and expanded the enclosure. 
Once they had done that enough times and secured enough dry space, they were able to dig into the sea floor. It's mind-boggling, isn't it? The humans believed that by going through such great hardships to build these temples, they could show the depth of their devotion. Yeah, that makes sense. Really? Current research suggests the site of this temple once sat on the seacoast. What? Are you saying I'm wrong? No, I'm only reporting what I've read in academic journals. How would coastal ruins sink into the ocean? When the, the tides would rise. The, slumber, the land shifted, and this temple was swallowed by the sea. Scholars were able to prove that the sand and the heavy stones formed an airtight seal around the structure. Later, people carved an undersea tunnel to connect to the temple, bringing it to its current state. Now that you mention it, I think I read that book too. Revised theories on ancient architecture, right? That's the one. Have you read it, Aizen? No, I only read the first edition. How old is Aizen? The problem with the stone enclosure theory is that each time you expand the enclosure, the innermost stones have to be carried out. Once that was pointed out as being too inefficient, alternate theories were developed. The revised edition has a number of competing theories. I highly recommend reading it. I will. Oh, they're having a buddy running like friendship there. I love it. A complete rebuttal of Eisen's explanation. Th that was not my intention. Oh. Ah, it's okay. Archaeology is a continuous process of asking new questions and making new discoveries. Prevailing theories. Oh, poor Eisen. What's it matter anyway? Let's just get going. He's our friend, and we care about him. That's what matters. Also, so does that mean if we are done the Earth one, which I believe we did that back in Logris? We're doing the water one. Does that mean we're going to eventually go inside, like, a volcano, I guess, for the fire one? And then into the air for the wind one? We're going to go to all the Empyrean sites? There's no Empyrean here, right, Aizen? If you're worried about it, why not flip that coin of his? Heads, no Empyrean. Tails, Empyrean Central. But it always comes up tails. Like I said before, these temples are nothing more than places of worship built by human hands. The current religion started when humans fearful of natural forces, began to worship four gods they called the Empyreans. If you're concerned about whether or not one is sleeping in these ruins, just remember that their very existence is only legend. Be that as it may, Enominot certainly... Exists. And that's troubling. Aye. But I've never heard a single story of anyone actually seeing an Empyrean. Enominot must be a special case, then. Must be. I suppose so. If there were four more like him, and they were all trying to stop us, we'd be sunk. I can't disagree. Okay, nice fade the black there. How's it going? How's it going, buds? I'm j uh, I am just... Okie dokes! How's it going? We're here to beat your butts into a pulp. I'm going to fake you, and then I'm going to break you, and then I'm going to stab you, and I don't know the melody that well. I'm not sure if that was necessary to Okado, but whatever floats your boat, my bud. Okay, let's actually... Oh, uh, you don't have enough break gauge to summon someone else, so you're kind of stuck there. Damn, indeed. Eats. Eat, 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 eat! Oh, Snapples! I have one HP because I was stupid. Uh, there we go! He said it'll help us. Wait, what? Is this still possible? Totally! Cool! Alright. Here we go! Nope, get out of here, please. No, thank you. Thank you, Lapisets. Alright, who has low health? You have low health. Let's get you out of here, please. Get out of here, please. Thank you. Oh, come on. Oh, no. Did not mean to do that. Oh, Orokodo's out now, too. Not necessarily a hard vow, we just got overwhelmed. So, let's just keep trying to do our best here. The poison was not helping, that's for sure. 
Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, dokes. If we can just... There we go, let's try it. Yep, let's get one of these guys out of the way at least. Or not. Yeah, strike those heavens. Give them, give them hell. Yeah, you are annoying. Stop that, please. Thank you. There we go. Strike those heavens. We'll forget the pain move. We'll strike those heavens. We got poison up oh, out of there. Oh, they're doing the poison. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not sure who's doing the poison. Oh, this guy has low health. Oh, fudge! Strike the heavens some more. Okay, we made it out of there. So, no biggie. All right, all right. Break soul, static force, hold the... Uh, okay, this is a set. With well, three more souls during Divide Pain to activate, this ability extends duration to Divide Pain. Okay. Nice, nice. All right, so how we doing? We're all over back up. Doing okay-ish. Got through that, no problemo. I mean, it was a bit of a problemo, but we did it. Ooh, are we gonna do a water temple proper here? I'm excited. What we got? The chalice bears the symbol, and that commands the flowing water. Should the chalice be filled with water and mark its mark turn blue, the water shall be as a wall that thwart your path. Should the chalice be dried by flame and its mark turn white, the impeding water shall lie still, opening a path before you. So basically, how to open these doors. So let's go find this chalice. Boop, boop, boop. Cat sobs, cat sobs, cat sobs. I like my cat sobs. Alright, so we just gotta... There's an end in the pedestal. Looks like you can... Oh, okay, so we gotta find uh, either like some kind of red or blue gem to put in there. Alrighty, right? Since we did not do super good in that battle, let's do some... Let's do some more just to rake up experience as well as rack back up our break gauges. If possible, that would be very lovely. Alright, hi there, buddy. Oh, okay. Oh, I said build up our break gauges, Aizen. Thank you. Why don't you use that last battle? What else, bud? Bye-bye. And get another one off here. Also... Oh, I got... There I got Heaven's Claw. Nice. Alrighty, so in this door, we have. White! We turned it red, okay. So that would open any waterlogged doors right now. Okay, so I'm guessing that central chalice is the one we want to go to at the very end of this dungeon. Okay. When a chalice is filled with water, the waterfall connected to it flow is blocking the way through. Using fire to boil away the water will halt the waterfall and allow you to move onward. You sell these chalices sometimes serve other purposes as well, like carrying myrrh and crystal chronicles. Just, just saying. It's a good game. I'll be remiss not to mention it because it's honestly one of the best Final Fantasy series, in my opinion. And it hasn't had a game in almost 10 years. Come on, guys. Step it up. Oh well, I got these instead. And okay, I guess there was not much to doing that one, but we did get some stuff at the very least. Like a dark bottle. Dark bottle increases encounters. Or I guess in this would make I I guess it would make more things spawn on the map then. And they would maliciously try to hunt us down. No thank you to that. So we need, we, need, we need a crystal to put in there to indent it. Oh, hey, look. Is, is this one of our first? I'm probably not one of our first, but... It's definitely a recolor! 
We're getting into later game territory. We know where to take the enemy as you've seen earlier, and then they just have a different palette. It's the classic RPG trope, and you know what? I don't care. I think it's cool. Whoa, yeah, Mirage Dance is awesome. Hey there. And... There we go. Was that supposed to be a joke? No, it was supposed to be fun. I hope you had fun. I had fun. Alright, so... Get the other wall fall down. Oh, hey, look, another... Quetzalorb. Again, those by the droves. Not that we have that many on us right now. If we have less than 200, we don't have that many cat orbs. We have less than 200, we don't have that many. It may seem like many, but it's not actually. This is a pretty cool area, I gotta admit. I really like water temples. I don't know why people have such a, like, an animosity against them. I think they're always cool in any game I've played. Water and air temples, for sure, are awesome. Alright, so let us take this. I was found at the monument. Sorry about the cut there, I actually got a phone call. Was not expecting that this late at night when I'm recording this, but uh, wanted to make sure everything was okay. Anywho's, uh, shaped like a teardrop, this jewel was found wedged in a monument at the Palomitas Temple. Okay, coolio. Where, where's this? Is this. Okie dokes! Well, ain't that special. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh no, water! How dare we not be able to get through water? I mean, I guess it's probably. Alright. It's probably, like, super powerful water that's flowing super hard down from above, but still. It's water! Walk through it! Come on! You afraid to take a shortcut? Well, we'll put the jewel in here. That way we can uh, evaporate the water. And ta-da! A new passageway opened. Alright, remember that warp point later. Maybe that warp point's like to get out of the out of the temple. Oh hey, what's up here? That looks like a fun time. Well, it wiped out the security for us, but Well look at that. Wolfie's got the crest of Amenoch, the same pendant worn by priestesses. Yep, saw that coming. Then that makes this demon. Yeah, she must be the missing mother, Mahina. <laughs> or could, ah, based on how small it is, I think it's actually a daughter. Yeah, it's unfortunate what we have to do here, but if it's wild and raging, we can't we don't really have much of a choice at the moment. I share your condolences though. I truly do. Also I like how Roko just sat there like, yeah, what else? Alright. And, uh, that should wrap us up. That should wrap us up. Okay. To think the priestess, beloved by her village, would become a demon. Eleanor? She's never going to be the same again. This is the least I can do for her. No, 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 wait. Hear her out. So says reason. No, so says a big jerk who asks you by birds fly and is a complete asshole. Huh? That feeling. Damn. 
Watch your tongue, I say after calling someone asshole. <laughs> Sorry, I've been trying not to, but we have, at, at some point you have to just admit, he's a big jerk. All right. Provides the ability to trigger ram skills. Fatigue. Oh, okay, cool, yo. Alrighty, right. So, actually, this looks like the point that we would have maybe seen? I don't know. Alright, save and in the temple. How's it going, gents? Don't mind me. That demon. I guess she caught demon blight when she was looking for her daughter. Yeah, that's what the girl at the inn said. But even after turning into a demon, she's still searching for her daughter. Or for her mother. Well, Rokuro, Koragane, and Dial all remember what they wanted when they were human, right? Demon or not, she's a mother. It's no surprise she would still be protective of her child. It could be that, or it could be something else. Well, I hope that's what it is. I know that must be how she felt as a human. But demons don't have a sense of motherhood or any such Who thing. told you? You saw how violent she was. She's not Mahima. Are you sure? She became a demon. She lost all capacity for empathy and love. It's heartbreaking, but it's the truth. Velvet and Rokuro still have empathy. The, uh, ding, 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 ding. Checked could take a hundred lives. And this one's even willing to attack exorcists. Demons can wipe out entire villages, even cities. Just as they destroyed I village. get that you still have that kind of backstory to you, but at the same time... Eleanor is right. There's no turning back once you've changed. Perhaps it would be a mercy to grant her peace through death. Um. What about yourself then, Rokuro? What about yourself and Velvet? Ah oh, well. Don't waste my time. Well, let's not waste time, get down to brass tacks, and have some fun beating up walls. Here we go, Jeff Lizard. I'm not sure what the fire on the ground was, but uh, that was looking cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, hey, Magilu, you finally... You're finally graduating. On to chocolate. you ask that all of a sudden? Well, according to the song Grimm deciphered, Inominat is an eight-headed dragon, right? The Empyreans are supposed to be these holy beings, but using Therians to feed on malevolence sounds more sinister than divine to me. That's a good point. You've got a point there. Empyreans are a type of Moloch theme, and that doesn't seem like any Moloch we've seen. And even less so when we're talking an eight-headed dragon. Is it so far-fetched? What do you think will happen if the Therians come together? But if Malakim can eventually become demons, wouldn't it be fair to assume that this might be a Malakim that became a demon that they mistook for an Empyrean? The mighty beast will attack us with its eight long snake-like necks and eight heads spitting hellfire. I can see your worry. Right? And that's eight heads with only six of us to take them on. It'd be more than we could handle. I'd have to conjure up a double or two. You can do that? <laughs> of course not. Oh. Then why mention it? Oh. What is it, Lucky said? Do you think each head would act of its own free will? Because if they do, they'd be uncoordinated. Bumping into each other and going this way and that. Giving us an opening. If we fight as one united whole, I know we can win. Yes. If we work hand in hand, victory is ours. Right, everyone? Uh, yeah, this group doesn't trust you that still much, Elnor. United? Have you looked at us? Yeah, that's also a good point. Well, I mean... But he was trying. He was trying. Come on, give the kids some credit. Alright, I think, though, we're gonna end this episode off here. We'll continue to explore the dungeon on the next episode. And we'll just leave these guys to just, uh... You do you, guys. You do you. If you like this video, please consider hitting that like button below. If you want to see more content from me, please consider sa uh, subs sa saving, subscribing. Please consider saving, though. It's very important when you're playing an RPG. If you like what you've seen, uh, Tales of Berseria is available on Steam and PlayStation 4. Steam is how I am playing it. Uh, go give the game a pickup and show Bandai Namco or Namco Bandai your support. Otherwise, I will see you all on the next one. So until then, ciao.